Good morning, Mike Ingham. You are in a new location today. Where the heck are you? Yeah, it's uh, vacation time, kind of. We have a place in the Adirondack Mountains in New York, upstate New York, which is, Adirondacks are huge. There's like 6 million acres up here. And we have uh, two of them, so. <laughs> it's your isolation cabin up there. Excellent. That's right. Uh, yeah. Well, Good the place. topic we wanted to cover today, well, speaking of new locations, right, is, is you know, how to prepare for new venues or even venues you've been to, I guess, a million times, or it doesn't really matter, is how to get ready uh, and figure out the race venue that you're headed to. Um, that's yeah, nice. that's a great topic. I think it's um, something I take very seriously. It's, um, you know, I, I don't like just showing up to a venue and kind of looking at the water for the first time without having some film familiarity with it. And you're right too, I, I do it too. Even if I've been to a venue, I revisit it. Hopefully at that point, I, it jogs my memory too as I'm doing my homework. Oh yeah, I remember how the sea breeze filled in, you know, mm. that kind of thing. And knowing you as a process driven individual, uh, what is this process that you have here? Do you wanna walk through? Yeah, the process is, um, yeah, let me let me kind of share my screen and and kind of walk through a few things that I do to, to get ready and, um, and we'll go from there. So to start off with, uh, you know, I, I go to the notice of race, first thing I do and, and figure out where they're gonna race us. So I just uh, randomly pick Charleston here, um, four typical circles they might race me on for this event, you know, doesn't matter what event it is, but this is in the harbor, they say, we're not gonna go outside. And within the harbor, they could race us either, you know, kind of north of this island, this is Charleston, the city right here, or kind of south of the island to the west and then to the east. So there's kind of four spots. So that's where I can, I know that I can, you know, narrow my focus to that. So once I do that, the very first thing I wanna do is just take a look at the chart of the area. So I, I just pulled up marine ways here. There's a whole bunch of them, Navionics and things like that. Um, you know, marine ways is free and uh, a bunch of them are free until you wanna actually block courses or something. But if you just kind of wanna see what's going on in the really big picture and then narrow it down, I, I love doing this. So this is sort of, you know, let's just say where Charleston is. It's on the East Coast, kind of the Southeast and the Atlantic Ocean is pretty deep. And then it gets much shallower towards shore. And then as you, here's Charleston right here. Um, and we're not gonna be racing out here anyway, but I, I just like to know. And then once you get in, you can sort of see that, you know, Charleston is, has these three rivers coming in. So you know the current's gonna be rushing in and out, right? It's gonna flood in as well, but particularly out. And, and I'm looking, hey, if it's raining up north and maybe, or in, inland, maybe that's gonna be a big deal. And then as you zoom in more and more, you sort of get some other feels to what's going on with the, with the harbor. There's an island here. Uh, these are channels. And remembering where the circles are, they're here, here, and here. So I'm really thinking about that. And then you go a little deeper in and I, and I start to really, once you get far enough in, you actually start seeing the depths. You know, I think this is really telling. If current's flowing, it's gonna flow mostly in the deeper water. So that's the first place I'm gonna look. It's gonna rip through here. It's gonna rip through here. It's gotta go around this island. Um, there is a shallow spot here, right? So, um, and, and I've raced here and I, I know this matters, right? Like, you know, going into this shallow zone makes a difference. It's much deeper here in channels here. Mm -hmm. So, it's just kind of feel for the depth. And I, I, and I, you know, I might even print this out and laminate it or something, have it on board with me. So if we change venues, I can kind of remind myself what's going on. That's good idea. Which yeah. brings to the point that actually how, how, how few people actually use the depth readout on their displays, you know, um, particularly in a place like Charleston, you know, okay, cool, we're into the shallow um, or uh -oh, <laughs> we're back in the channel, you know. Um, yeah, and depending on what boat you're, you're sailing, you may not even have a depth sounder. So mm -hmm. the depth sounder might tell you, oh, we really are approaching this shallow zone here or oh, we're still not out of the current yet because it's mm -hmm. we're still deep here. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but even if you don't, then you, you, you start paying attention to the landmarks like, oh, there's a little pier here. Where are we compared to the pier? There's a lighthouse here. Oh, we're still really far from the lighthouse. Okay, now we're getting closer. We're probably near the shadow, the shallow spots. So 
So um, essentially just taking the big picture and, and just narrowing it on down to the three, you know, the race course area. And this is where it's important to read the sailing instructions and know exactly where your courses are. Yeah, the notice of race will tell you um, typically. And, you know, what I do with this information later is, you know, maybe when I get there, I find some old salt that knows the harbor really well. And I'm like, hey, I know this was a shallow spot here. Is it really current relief there? And he goes, oh, yeah. And, and, and the, sometimes they'll give you some really cool thing like, oh, when the waves are big there, you have to go there or something. You know, you know they, they always have their little indicator of what's worked for them over the years. And you can really short circuit a, a learning curve that way. What's the secret there? Do you go to like the local fish market or you just kind of hang around? Where do you find the old salt? Well, I think the old salt's at the bar, right? Like, uh, you know, buy some guy <laughs> a drink, right? Like, yeah, yeah you know, it, it, you just find the right person that, that yeah. just sort of gets it, you know? Like somebody has been racing there a while. It's successfully. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of people that aren't successful. Maybe you don't want their advice, but, you know. Yeah, yeah but somebody that's been sailing there a lot, they're going to know uh, what's going on a lot more than you are. Yeah. But and having this... Like yeah, go ahead. I did know a friend who, who who would basically take a chart like this, as you know, and walk into the bait shop. Mm. And, uh, you know, make a little bribery or something like that, you know, because you know how the fishermen and the sailors don't always get along. But like, yeah, just slap <laughs> on the counter and be like, hey, do you mind walking me through what's going on out there? And uh, yeah, fishermen will know. The That's guys sure. with the fishermen will know far more than any sailor. But anyway, go ahead. All right. So we're looking yeah. at the current, the overall flow here. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think, you know, some, some venues current might not be a factor on some lake somewhere that, you know, I'm not focusing on this, but I still want to look at the depth. Maybe there's some, you know, I don't want to run a ground or, you know, there's some shoal or a sandbar or a rock or, a, you know, obstruction, it's just kind of nice to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it is a current venue, I start really thinking about that. So you, know, you want to put your energy to where what's, what's going to matter for that venue. Um, <laughs> It'd be in Charleston, one, we're definitely talking about current. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I, I find that the, um, you, you, you can go to like Sailflow or Windy or Predict Wind or whatever it is and, and go look up really good weather history and what the buoys are saying. I find that less true with current. Like people haven't modeled current really well in different venues and there's no one source to it. So like, for example, I was just sailing in Nyack, uh, and it turns out the Stevens Technical Institute did a fantastic job of modeling, um, you know, modeling current on the Hudson River. So this is, you know, Manhattan and Long Island and everything. And Hudson River goes up and you take different times of day and you can kind of walk through what they expect and the, you know, when, it, when and how it shifts and just super cool. And, and it's is that... Is that, uh, this may be going a little too deep in love, but is that more surface level water or, or are they measuring down through the water column as well? You know, I, I think that, I don't know what they're doing. So this is surface currents. Oh, so right, they yeah, can right. go, you know, you can go surface salinity and, you know, mm. yeah. So for the most part, this is the current we're going to race in. Yeah. I think is, if that's what you're really asking, right? Yeah. And um, so they did a great job. I, you know, interestingly enough, you think Charleston, this place that so many Charleston Race Week, and uh, I've raced so many championships there now. You would think that this would have been modeled by somebody at some point, and it's kind of not. You know, mm -hmm. so it's uh, you know, I think you're really depending on other things. I, I wanted to bring this Stevens one up because. I only found it because I was racing there and I was like, I can't, where are currents? And somebody found this and they pass it around everybody. And I'm like, that's really cool. Mm. And it turns out that you can go pick up, you know, there's a whole bunch of, you can go to Manhattan, you can go to New Jersey, Delaware Bay. They've done a lot, bunch of things. They haven't, you know, Rhode Island Sound, you know, there's all kinds of really cool stuff they've done. Mm. Really neat. My style too. They color code it. <laughs> Reds a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, like visual works, right? Yeah. Avoid the red unless you're going the right way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so back to Charleston though, they don't have this. I, I wanted to point this out though, because wherever you go, you might stumble across somebody that did a really good job. I, in Miami, I stumbled across one where um, they, they studied it using ducks. Miami, uh, Miami University, University of Miami, where it put little ducks around and they, they study the current. It was a pretty good little study they did. <laughs> and I, I'm not even sure they were trying to do the current. I think it might've been a group trying to track ducks, you know, but it was still kind of useful. Mm. 
it was pretty cool how the things kind of traveled around, especially at the entrance to Biscayne Bay and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But the point being but, is, yeah, you just dig a little deeper and, you know, wherever there's a university near any of these race courses and there's some sort of ocean sciences lab, 10 bucks says they've, they've done some sort of something. Uh, yeah. They, they throw in some current sticks and you got to find it. URI does a good one here, I think for near against Bay, but anyway, yeah. Find the yeah. local professor as well, right? There's your other source. If you can't find a fisherman, go find the, the, the oceanography professor. Yeah, maybe they know. And then, you know, and so I found a few things online. Um, I can't even remember where I found this because I actually found this in my notes. But, you know, this is sort of somebody did a little something on the start of the flood. This might have been a Charleston Race Week. One of those little talks they always do for Charleston Race Week. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool, like the start of the flood. When it starts to come in, you can see it's coming in hard in the channel, but it's still going out here. Like it hasn't really switched yet. So it kind of switches, it has to switch here first, but it kind of switches along the edges first, which you've always read about. But that's kind of cool to see. Mm -hmm. um, and and what then are the, once, what are the green yeah. squigglies? Is that slack? Yeah, it's pretty slack, you know, okay. really light. They were kind of say, kind of differentiate it from, you know, the red ripping in. They were trying to say hey, it's hardly anything. Mm. And, you know, it's really shallow through this section. So, kind of switch there first, you know, and, and you know, the theory that it switches at the edges first is you have all this momentum, you know, it's ripping through this channel. It's hard to change that momentum. So it's going to yeah. spill across the edges first, but it's kind of cool to see it in, in action. And then, then when you see this, this will, I'm sure it will come in as a line, right? Right. Then you're like, Oh, here comes the line. It's switching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, not to do a current discussion here, but I think, you know, we always look talk about high tide and the currents, you know, and the tide doesn't always exactly match up with the current. Mm -hmm. So if it's high tide, if low tide, you know, the flood's going to start, uh, even though low tide might be two, it might take longer for it actually to start switching direction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Particularly if you've got the rain, you've got whatever the gradient flow has been for 10 days, right? There's a lot of factors. Rain is a really big one. Uh, that's a really big one. I, I found in an app. That I'll let your internet catch up there, Michael. On you're up, you're up there in the Adirondacks. Signals bouncing on mountains. Let's see if we get you back. Ball. Oh, so that's some some days when you get that huge current in Annapolis. It's because not only has it rained and the current's going out, but you had a you had a moment of buffering there, um, oh. so they you just walk back. So they, with the rain in Annapolis, you know, when you get the big dumps, you say basically there is this kind of residual flow that goes on for or a lot longer, right? Yeah, but it turns out there's also a dam they may let go. Oh so, yeah, right. Yeah, look for so the logs. You can look that up on the internet. You know, yeah. a lot of this stuff, all I do is just start Google searching until I find something and like talks about current somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, so your max flood, you know, you can see that right down the channel as you'd expect it's a lot more really interesting and really important for this venue is that in these shallow spots it really is less so like if you're near this island it's going to go out and around but here is your your you know you're currently leave for help depending on you know it, it's going to be less current here so depending on which way the wind's going which way you're going up or down wind you got to you got to know that you're getting out in the current here and you're out of it here Mm -hmm. And you can Big certainly deal. you can see it there in Charleston for sure on the water, huh? No question about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I took these and I went to some old local salt and I said, "Hey, from what I can tell, you really get some relief here," and and just kind of convert, you know, confirmed all this with them. And, and as soon as you give them specifics, they kind of layer on their experience on top of that, mm. their exceptions and all that stuff. And then they also had this max ebb as well. So kind of same thing. Uh, you look at the max ebb, same deal in these shallows, it's a lot less. Uh, but noticeably, it really goes out here in the ebb. So cool stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a lot on current because it's a current venue, but I think that's one of those real local knowledge things that really matters. Yeah. To the point though, it, it it's not just a matter of figuring out whether it's going in or out, but really what it's doing when it's when it's doing it. Correct. Right. Are there is it like a carpet where it doesn't 
really affect when it's where you go. It affects the ley lines and the star and the long tack, but it doesn't, you know, or is there something going on where you can get out or into it? Then it starts to make a huge difference. You know, kind of the last big picture thing I do before I start digging into details is I, I just like to look at Google Maps and uh, also the, the elevation. So what I mean by that is, you know, we, we touched on it when I was looking at the chart, but I was really focused on the bottom then. But this is really not built up, right? Like this is not gonna get hot. It's not gonna interfere with the sea breeze. Maybe a little of it here will get disturbed, but it's not terrible. Uh, but boy, Charleston itself is just streets and buildings and, you know, if the wind's coming over there, that's a whole different story, right? Mm. You got this big bridge, you know, wind might funnel down here. Yeah, just get, I want to know what this, get a feel for this so that when I show up and I see it, I'm not seeing it for the first time. Would you take it to the next level and say, well, okay, well, you know, historically, this is the sea breeze kind of week and yada, yada, and, and would you draw your own, arrows or around the land masses to kind of give you a visual of which way, you know, uh, land will bend the breeze or could bend it. Yeah, I might do that. Um, I, I, when I do, um, for myself in the morning, what I, what I'll typically do is, uh, I'll do that in the morning of a regatta or the night before I'll kind of take a look at all the conditions and figure out what's going on and, uh, kind of make my own guess of what might kind of happen. And, uh, and with that, white, what might be sort of the salient event of the day, you know, is it a transition to the sea breeze or is a, a little front coming through or, you know, what's kind of the, the indicator of some event for the day? What's going to change throughout the day that I need to keep my eyes open for? Okay. Yep. Um, but back to the homework, the last thing I do is you know, I find some kind of elevation map. And these are super easy to find. This is one from just a topography map. Once again, in colors, you can see, you know, even inland pretty far, that's what, 30 some feet high. You know, there's buildings in Charleston that are higher than that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's particularly where the sea breeze might be coming in. You know, there's not in, a, in the way of the wind, right? This might be 20 feet right here. So you know, I'm not looking at hills and mountains to really think about. And what is the takeaway from that that you can apply? Yeah, so the, um, the takeaway from all of this is it's a highly current driven venue. The thermal is relatively unobstructed. And until the wind starts to kind of go over the city, you know, if it's an easterly, a westerly or, or even through here, as soon as it comes from anywhere in that north quadrant to west quadrant, you know, it's, it's going to be disturbed, but it's not like mountainous disturbed, you know, it's just kind of land mass heating up because there's a city there. Uh, so that's what I get out of all this. Mm. Would you would you go as to to sort of like apply that to your rig settings that well if it's going over the land you're going to have this more dynamic potentially lulls and you know so maybe set the boat up to be a little more powered up versus the sea breeze you know it's going to be a consistent whatever it's going to be and kind of go that level. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of what we might do with the rig, but I think a lot of that you can do when you're out there, right? You're mm -hmm. just kind of setting up the rig for what you got. I, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm when I'm thinking about this, I'm more thinking about a little less on how I'd sail the boat and a little more of what my strategy might be. Do I want to go gotcha. left, right, up the middle? What's my kind of day discussion? Is it like current is everything? It doesn't even matter what the wind does. You got to get out of the current or is it, you know, a little combination of shifts in current or am I looking for this event with a huge shift at some point during the day? You know, that's what I'm looking for in all this stuff. Okay. And then, you know, maybe a little bit of that rig thing, like, wow, it's going to be, the lulls are going to be eight and the puffs are going to be 20. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I set my rig up and sail that, right? <laughs> yeah. Versus oh. a pretty steady sea breeze. Yeah. Um, the next thing I do is I sort of go to the, you know, 
the map of, I, I like sail flow as a good start here. I like to look at, at the map at, of Charleston and pick a buoy or two. So in this case, uh, this sh shoots follies right in the middle of the whole thing. It's perfect. And I like to go dig in and find, uh, you know, go find some history. And um, so I'm looking at shoots folly here. And I look back and let's, you know, let's go pick a date here. Let's go pick, uh, you know, 2021. Suppose we're racing in July of 2022. Well, why wouldn't I go investigate what happened in July of 2021? And right. Maybe do that for 20 as well. And so you can see all these, these wind graphs. I might dig in a little deeper and see how many days are thermals. And if it's a thermal, is it marching right? What's it doing? Um, if it's a system breeze, what kind of, is there some sort of trend I see or something? And, and this could be a huge time sink, right? Like yeah. how many days do you look at and what do you do with the data? But kind of gives so, me a few uh, moments. Yeah. Scroll down and uh, I think what, so once you select Monday, what are we looking at? There you go. So yeah, so you can, can really dig into, you know, this, the speed and direction over the day. Uh, it's got lots of data here. You know, so it's a hot day, 84. So you can sort of find, a, a, you know, as it's coming closer, you could find something that's kind of a similar day mm -hmm. and kind of map it out and see what's going on, right? So yeah, you might study this day a little bit if it looks similar. This looks like, you know, kind of that thermal day, right? You know, right in the middle of the day, kind of goes to zero, whatever leftover system kind of goes away and you get that nice southerly. Um, and it gets pretty windy, right? The puffs of well above 20. Well, the kind of wonder what that was. Was that maybe <laughs> some little <laughs> cloud or something, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a gust. <clears throat> but maybe you find another couple of days that have the same thing and you're like, hmm, this is kind of a trend. But you can see that, like this is a very typical Tuesday was another typical, didn't have that, right? A little less, more like a 10 knot thermal, right? Mm. A lot of thermal days out here. Yeah, breezes all over the place that day. Yeah. yeah. Well, but right in the kind of the midday, kind of peak sailing hours, it went thermal and then some event must have happened. So mm. maybe this was a little front that came through and yeah, definitely front and then get the gnarly out of it. So yeah. well, that's cool. So yeah, you can really kind of get a flow of the uh, from the sail flow, get a flow of the patterns. Yeah, I know if, if I'm getting ready for a worlds or something, it's probably worth looking at a lot of days. If mm -hmm. I'm going for the weekend, yeah, quick glance, whatever, you know. Yeah. Hard to do everything. Uh this may be a, is there uh, an export function in sail flow once you get to this level? Hmm. Uh stats or I mean a way to kind of excel that i wonder anyway we're probably getting into yeah anyway yeah, you know i i find these interesting sort of i love these little wind graphs that sort of give you where most of the wind comes from it kind of gives mm -hmm. you a feel that and hey it's you know we're in june right yeah and um we're looking at it's almost always south southwest so that's the thermal i'm sure we really don't get a lot more so you really should study the sea breeze right Mm -hmm. It kind of gives you a feel and uh, for what you're looking for. Cool. And this looks like four years of data. And, um, you know, July, August, maybe October is very different, right? So look at that. Thermal's not coming in. So if you're going later in the year, maybe you're not studying the thermal. So, yeah. I, I, oh, but that didn't answer your, your specific question. Um, you know, is there a, a graph of it? Um, I, I don't remember if there is one in self. I've definitely used that function before, though. Oh, there's, actually a, just, there's, a, there's a graph toggle uh, far left there. So just that'll be the last thing we play with, I guess. But that's. Yeah, but I don't know if how you export data. Because yeah. I have done that before where I throw it into a spreadsheet. I, I did that before the uh, world's in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and mm. hoping to find some pattern. I never yeah. did. <laughs> okay, last check. Then what's the archive button there? Yeah, archive. Yeah. Okay, that does for you. Oh, that's, well, that's where we were. That's, that's where, where we were. Okay. Before. Yep. All right, good. So then what else? Uh, <laughs> so you, you've got windy. 
teed up there. Yeah, I love Wendy. Uh, so I like Wendy. You got these ISO bars. You can kind of um, kind of go through and and look at. Now we're getting more near term, right? So I was kind of looking at the history with the other stuff, and now we're looking at you know maybe five days ahead. It start get some feel for what might go on. I don't like to look out any more than three or four days or five days at the max because it's just so much can change in our weather. But, you know, this is kind of the morning of or the night before or a couple of days before I get some trend, know what to expect. And, uh, you know, I, I really like this, the way this looks. It's got, you know, you can really zoom out and see what's driving this, this high off here and a low up here. You know, so the wind's going to go around that way kind of see what's driving it. Kind of an interesting shape there, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you kind of have that all day long, you know, they, and then, then you go to kind of like the full global view and you could see how things are really moving, right? Yeah, that's really cool. And I, you know, back to being visual, I like these little tiny arrows that are moving, the colors or the speed of the wind and um, zoom in. But the, the fun things here is, is it's really worth playing with this. There's, uh, you can kind of, you know, suppose, you know, we want to propose race days tomorrow. Today's Thursday, right? So, you know, midday, what's it going to look like? What's the driving force tomorrow? And it tells you where they expect the isobars to be. Look at this little kind of little cool little low there. So at the red, the edge of something. And, and, you know, when I see this too, I think, boy, that all it has to do is shift a little bit and it could be a very different day right right you know it gives me my confidence in what they're saying is lower and lower but it's giving me an idea what to look for if it does do something a little different um other cool features in here is you can kind of look at you know this is the surface wind but you can see what's doing aloft you know see if it kind of matches if it's very different aloft then maybe the puffs will be something interesting to look at mm -hmm. you know there's so much to look at here um actually you just showed me this i didn't even know this was here the um the compare so we can have within this you have the global forecasting system the the icon which is the european nam north american model and you're like your head's spinning at which one to use right <laughs> uh, one of i really like is is i click between them but there's this compare button down here mm. that shows them all so i suppose we're looking at friday at you know kind of 11 a.m start well, this one's saying it's kind of a, you know, southeast at eight. This one's saying southeast at five. There's actually a reasonable amount of agreement, right? East, mm -hmm. southeast at seven. You know, if I see that, they're all saying the same thing, then, you know, I have yeah. a little higher confidence than if like, like this one, suppose we're trying to do it on Sunday, kind of 2 p.m. Well, these are pretty different, right? Right. When it says three at east, and you know my my feeling, my my confidence just gets lower and lower when they all disagree. Like I'm liking that GFS one right there, right? A lot more yeah. brief. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to pick what you want though. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what these are for, Dave. These are. For I like that model. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to. You don't get to go pick the one you like the best. You know, the other cool thing about this is um, you can do clouds. So you layer on the clouds and, and that tells me something, you know, like if there's going to be a lot of clouds, you know, maybe we're not going to have a, you know, a thermal because there's, you know, so there's, it sort of gives you an idea what to look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many sure. cool things, so many layers in this whole thing. Switch between them. Um, another thing I do is, uh, you know, I look up the water temperature. And, I, and when I'm um, Charleston, South Carolina, um, water temperature. And what I really care about is the ocean water temperature. And Charleston ocean water temp. So last I checked, it was 82 degrees or 84. So it's 82 degrees. Um, and that's really important for me for determining whether I'm, you know, helps me look for the thermal, right? So 
the way I figure it is if it's a nice clear day, you need five, six degrees difference between the water temperature and the land temperature uh, to tell. And if you just look at, you know, if you just go to some, any weather site, you know, weather underground or something, you know, you kind of look at the temperature for Charleston. And if you see the land temperature is, is you know, more than five degrees difference, you're kind of looking for something, you know, you're looking for a sea breeze potentially. Cool. Yeah. So many, so many, so much access to, to weather data. It's awesome. Yeah. Rest. And you sort of have to take what's important, you know, if it, and, and decide which you, you think is, so it's going to be 86 and the, the water temperature is 81, 82, you know, it's, that's not a very compelling thermal, right? Mm. That's the gust to one miles per hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that explains it, right? So, um, and then the day of, I kind of take a, you know, I kind of take a, this Google, Google Maps view of, of the harbor and, and I might start drawing some arrows of what I might expect and really gets my head around it. Cool. All right, so that's all your pregame work, right? And so I guess, what are your thoughts though? I mean, all of us, you put the boat away, you drive home, you, you, your brain is into like what happened on the race course, but do you ever do the back end sort of a debrief on the weather side of what, what really happened compared to what you thought was going to happen and make note in your own, you know, sailing notebook or whatever you keep your notes. Yeah. I think in an ideal world, that would be, you know, what we do. Uh, you sort of, sort of take that prediction thing and then maybe you write on it what you decided to predict and then you, you decide whether you actually succeeded or not, right? You say, what really happened out there? How, how right was I? You certainly know it in the moment, but when, you know, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of things we should do. I think if we had infinite time, when I was coaching the Olympic guys, I would do that because that was my job. But, you know, mm. usually you're packing up, trying to make it to work on Monday morning, right? Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> You know, but it's probably lot. worthwhile. It is worth taking a minute to go. It really take, is. Yeah. Sort of. Okay. This is, this is true. What happened? Make a note. Put in your notepad. And yeah. Um, you know, at this point, I have that for Charleston. I've done that enough that you know I have a pretty decent idea of what's going on in Charleston. Yeah. And, cool. Uh, so when I go back, I can kind of glance. So valuable to go through that and glance at it. And say, hey, what really happened? And you know, remind yourself before the regatta. Okay, so what's your next, uh, where, where are you scouting now? What's, what's your next venue that you got on your target? Well, the, the most fun event I got coming up is the Sunfish Worlds in Lake Garda, Italy. Ooh, mm. is yeah. that uh, Riva or how far down the-, the... It's the Riva side, it's, uh, you know, it's up north. Nice. And um, so the Torbello side of it, so kind of the northwest, it's such a cool venue. It's the best venue on the planet, it is. Yeah, it really is. Um, so yeah, I could actually look that up. Um, and that, what time of year is that? The September. It's September. Yep. And mm -hmm. I've raced a uh, worlds there before, different you know, J twenty four worlds there before. So I'm pretty familiar with the venue. But this is those, you know, the cliffs up the side. Oh, We're racing. Yes. You gotta you do know. do a share, and then we'll see what you're looking at. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, you know, relating this back to local knowledge, there is the, um, you know, this truly is a local knowledge venue. There's no current. The, um, you know, these, it's hard to see here, but these truly are massive cliffs. I don't know, thousands of feet high. Mm -hmm. and they go straight down the lake, but then they go straight down another 600 feet. The, um, every morning, there's the dump out of the mountains and it goes funnels down this way. And every afternoon it funnels up from the south. Uh, and right, right, of, right when the church bells start, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the local knowledge has it that there's compression along this shore and you have to, when the wind's from the south here, you know, this is truly a place that if you didn't talk to some locals, you know, the wind's funneling this way, you, you have to go, you have to go to the shore over here. Go to the wall. And, you know, the joke is you, you sail to the wall until you can touch it and then you tack. <laughs> it's probably a little exaggeration. I mean, to give you a feel, these are snow-capped peaks. That's how high these mountains are around it. Um, 
All right, cool. So well, we can't um, go across, but you know, so I'm looking at something very different. I'm not trying to do a current study. I'm trying to get that sort of local knowledge and then hopefully can sail the venue early and do some split tax with my buddies and really get a feel for it. Go train in the waves, right? You know, big breeze yeah, and waves. Train in the waves. Yep. Waves and, um, and it's windy, you know, and not like 30 windy or 25, but it's, you know, 20. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm Heaven okay. on earth. All right, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, thanks for your time, Mike. Appreciate it. So, um, yeah, it's good. A lot of us are this is that time of year. Everyone's moving around the regatta, so this is a uh, good prep. And uh, all right, we'll see how you deal with it. Nice, nice house. <laughs> thanks. I love you.